That's a, uh, um, Chuck, will you stand behind the clock there and just block at the whole meeting? Yeah, or just take it down. All right, let's roll. The January 18th, 2022 meeting of the City Council of the City of Springfield, Illinois is called to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to see the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Clerk, if you'd please call the roll. Absolutely. Alderman Redpath. Welcome back, Mayor. I'm glad you're feeling better here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Alderman Gregory. Here. Alderman Williams. Here. Alderman Fulgenzi. Here. Alderwoman Purchase. Here. Alderwoman Desenso. Present. Alderman McMiniman. Here. Alderwoman Conley. Present. Alderman Donnellan. Here. Alderman Hanauer. Here. Mayor Quorum is present. Thank you. The uh, first item on the zoning agenda is docket number 2021-064 for the property located at 1417 East Lakeshore Drive. Petitioners are Dean and Pamela Robert as lake leaseholders. Present zoning classification is R1, single family residence district section 155.016. Requested zoning relief, a variance of appendix A, section three setbacks of the land use plan for Lake Springfield and its marginal properties to allow the installation of an in-ground pool on the west side of the existing house, 52 feet from the shoreline at normal pool depth, instead of the 75 feet required and a shading pergola on the north side of the pool that will be within 55 feet of the shoreline at normal depth instead of the 75 feet required. The concrete pool deck will be 42 feet at the closest point to the shoreline. Springfield Sangamon County Regional Planning Staff recommendation is denial. Planning and Zoning Commission recommendation is grant the petition as submitted. Chair will entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I move that we accept the Planning and Zoning Commission's recommendation. Second. We move and second to accept the Planning and Zoning Commission recommendation to grant the petition as submitted. And second, any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. The voting is now open. And the zoning request passes 10 voting yes, none voting no. Next item on the agenda is docket number 2021-066 for the property located at 4550 West Isles Avenue. <coughs> Petitioner is Young Men's Christian Association of Springfield, Illinois. Present zoning classification is R1. Single family residence district section 155.16016. Requested zoning relief, a variance of section 155.101. Required accessory off street parking spaces, amusement facilities to allow the existing 427, 427 feet accessory or 427 accessory off street parking spaces and the approximately 210 unpaved parking spaces in the grass demonstrated in exhibit D, totaling approximately 637 parking spaces to serve as sufficient accessory off street parking spaces for the existing facility and the planned 11 planned soccer fields on the subject real estate for not more than 20 days per year in lieu of the 1,281 accessory off street parking spaces required by section 155 Point one zero five and one five five point one zero one, and approximately six hundred eighty three accessory off street parking spaces required pursuant to the parking generation manual, variance of section one five five point one one zero, size of parking spaces variance of section one five five point one one one, access to off street parking facilities, variance of section one five five point one one two, surfacing, variance of section one five five. Point one one three screening variance of section one five five point one one four B regulations for the location of the curbing variance of section one five five point one four three A B plan of off street parking of loading areas variance of section one five five point four eighty D E H K landscape screening and lighting regulations and a variance of section one five five point zero six five side yard for community facilities as outlined in the petition. Springfield Sangamon County Regional Planning Staff recommendation is approval limited to no more than 20 days per year as stated in the petition.
Planning and Zoning Commission recommendation is accept the recommendation of the Springfield Sangamon County Regional Planning staff. Chair will entertain a motion. Uh, Mayor, I make a motion we accept the Springfield Sangamon Regional Planning Commission recommendation. Second. The move and second to accept the Springfield Sangamon County Regional Planning staff recommendation to limit uh, no more than 20 days per year as stated in the petition and seconded any discussion. Could you read that again, please? <laughs> <laughs> I knew someone would say that. Uh, part. <laughs> being further, no discussion. All those in favor, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. The voting is now open. And the uh, request, uh, zoning request passes 10 voting yes, none voting no. Next item on the agenda is docket number 2021-067 for the property located at 131 Chatham Road. Petitioner is Lamar Company, LLC, present zoning classification S2, Community Shopping and Office District, Section 155.031. Requested zoning relief, reclassification to B1, Highway Business Service District, Section 155.033, and a conditional permitted use pursuant to Section 155.341B and C, height and size regulation of off-street or off-premises signs, at a variance of section 155.001, definitions lot 155.340H, general <coughs> provisions of off-street advertising signs, variance of section 155.321A, non-illuminated signs, and section 155.322B, illuminated signs, variance of section 155.322C, illuminated signs to allow an illuminated sign to be located within 100 feet of a residential zoning lot. Variance of section 155.340C, general provisions for off-premises advertising signs. Variance of section 155.340D, general provisions for off-premises advertising signs. Variance of section 155.340I and J, general provisions for off-premises advertising signs to comply with the requirements of section 155.340Is aesthetic requirements and other subsection provisions. Section 155.340J, general provisions for off-premises advertising signs. Variants of section 155.341, height and size regulations for off-premises signs. Variants of section 155.320A and B, permitted accessory on-premises signs. And a variance of section 155.480, Landscape screening and lighting regulations to allow an off-premises sign advertising on the subject real estate in the same location and configuration as the existing sign without complying with the section 155.480 landscaping requirements as outlined in the petition. In the alternative, if the reclassification is denied, the petitioner requests a variance of section 155.340A, general provisions for off-premises advertising signs to allow an off-premises advertising sign on the real estate in its current S2 zoning classification and a variance of section 155.341, height and size regulations for off-premises advertising signs to permit an off-premises advertising sign on the subject real estate of a height not to exceed 40 feet above the ground in lieu of the zoning ordinance of 35 feet height limit and a maximum of 378 square feet of signage for each sign face in lieu of the zoning ordinance's 175 square feet limit. Springfield Sangamon County Regional Planning Staff recommendation is denial is submitted, but grant variances to section 155.340A and 155.341 as cited in the petition with the following conditions. Number one, the height dimensions and sign are of the proposed sign facing south shall not exceed the height dimensions and sign area of the existing sign i.e. no more than 40 feet in height with sign dimensions no larger than 10 and a half feet tall by 36 feet wide and with an area not to exceed 378 feet number two the new sign shall utilize an appropriate technology such as, but not limited to, that described in paragraph nine of the petition that limits brightness at night, directs light only in specified directions, and limits the area in which the display can be viewed to the satisfaction of the zoning administrator. 
Number three, the electronic display face will display messages that do not change more frequently than the uh, set nine to 11 second cycle <coughs> mentioned in paragraph eight of the petition. And number four, messages displayed shall be static images that do not include moving, scrolling, blinking, flashing, rotating, or animated graphics. Planning and Zoning Commission recommendation is accept the recommendation of the Springfield Sangamon County Regional Planning staff. Chair will entertain a motion. Um, I move that we accept the recommendation of the Springfield Planning and Zoning Commission. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded to accept the Springfield Sangamon County Regional Planning staff recommendation. The second. Any discussion? Mayor, real quick. Yep. Alderman Hanauer. It's, it appears that we, we've been getting a lot more of these types of signs. Um, do we need, maybe it'd be uh, worth looking into uh, reviewing our sign, ver our sign zoning um, to on, on these, I don't know, the, the different signs. We just get, we get a bunch of them. Uh, and I think at this stage, that seems to be the direction they're going with, uh, um, you know, with the lighted signs and, you know, the, the, the cooler signs, I guess it would be. <laughs> and I just think the city needs to really take a good look and, and maybe adjust our, our zoning policies so that they don't all have to come up here. Um, I know that we may still have to have some variances or whatever, but I, I do think that we need to look at that. I, I, just a suggestion. Well, you got one more. I'm next. Yep. <laughs> See, I, I mean, it's, and it has... We've had a bunch, and it's it's been all over the city. I got one coming next month or next. Yeah, month. so I mean, it. I just think, you know, we, we need to sit down and talk to these <clears throat> because I haven't. I don't know too many that's gotten, if any, that's gotten rejected. So it tells me that we're people are on board. You know, yep. so mm -hmm. I don't know if uh, Matt McLaughlin, you want to comment on that, or that's something we will take a look at, though. Yeah, that is something that we can certainly take a look at. Okay, thanks, Matt. Alderman McMinimum, then Alderwoman Conley. I think what it also reflects is once you open the door to larger signs and different illuminated signs, everybody wants to do it. So I think uh, that's also the problem. Uh, that's all the only. I think our zoning commission ought to take a look at this. That's a good suggestion, though. I think they ought to try to set broad policy. Thank you. Alderwoman Conley. Thank you. Yeah, actually, um, I think Alderman Hanover, that's a good idea. I've seen, um, you know, my, my parents live in Peoria. We've, Peoria has a lot more of these signs than Springfield does. And the restrictions that are included in this recommendation, you know, with the non-moving, we're not going to have movies playing on these billboards. It's not a blinking, flashing situation. That seems pretty standard from what I've seen in other communities. So if we, I, I would encourage that. I think it's, it's a lot of time and energy for people to come in here. Um, to make these changes, and I actually, I think that I, I don't mind them at all. I, you, get, you actually can have different mat different material on the billboards, um, and I believe this one even included um, an offer for community notices and community engagement notification on, on the billboard, which I think was, you know, obviously that's above and beyond, but it's, you know, a community that, uh, a business that wants to, maintain engagement with the with the local community so I, I certainly strongly support um this this plan and i hope that everyone will support it also and and we need to look at that as we move into more electronic billboards you know standards that are just easy to get through well get ready because he got to reread mine too yep. i know i'm glad chuck did, at least chuck didn't ask to repeat it this time <laughs> any other discussion <laughs> All those in favor of the motion vote yes. Those opposed vote no. The voting is now open. And the uh, zoning request passes 10 voting yes, none voting no. Next, and we will take a look at that. Next item on the agenda is docket number 2021-068 for the property located at 635 West Jefferson Street. Petitioner is Lamar Company, LLC. Present zoning classification is B1, Highway Business Service District, Section 155.031. Requested zoning relief, a conditional permitted use pursuant to Section 155.341B and C, height and sign size regulations of off-street premises signs, a variance of Section 155.001, definition lot, and Section 155.340H, general provisions for off-premises advertising signs. 
variance of section 155.321A, non-illuminated signs, and 155.322B, illuminated signs, variance of section 155.340C, general provisions of off-premises advertising signs, variance of section 155.340D, general provisions for off-premises advertising signs, variance of section 155.340I and J, off-premises signs to comply with the requirements of section 155.340, I's aesthetics requirements and other subsection provisions, variants of section 155.340J, general provisions for off-premises advertising signs, variants of section 155.341A, height and size regulations for off-premises advertising signs, variants of section 155.320B, permitted off accessory on-premises signs and a variance of section 155.480 landscape screening and lighting regulations without complying with the section 155.480 landscaping requirements as outlined in the petition as submitted. Springfield Sangamon County Regional Planning Staff recommendation is approval of the request conditional permitted use with the following conditions. Number one, the height, dimensions, and sign area of the proposed sign facing east shall not exceed the height, dimensions, and sign area of the existing sign, i.e. no more than 40 feet in height, with sign dimension no larger than 10 and a half feet tall by 36 feet wide, and with an area not to exceed 378 square feet. Number two, the electronic display face will display messages that do not change more frequently than the set of nine to 11 second cycle, mentioned in paragraph eight for the petition. Number three, messages sh displayed shall be static images that do not include moving, scrolling, blinking, flashing, rotating, and, or animated graphics. And number four, the west sign face shall be removed as described in paragraph eight in the petition. Recommended approval of the requested variances. Planning and Zoning Commission recommendation is accept the recommendation of the Springfield Sangamon County Regional Planning Staff. Chair will entertain a motion. Mayor, I move that we make the Springfield Sangamon County Regional Staff Planning Commission recommendation. Second. Been moved and uh, seconded to approve the Springfield Sangamon County Regional Planning Staff recommendation. Second, <clears throat> any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. The voting is now open. And the uh, zoning request passes 10 voting yes, none voting no. <coughs> and that concludes our zoning portion of the meeting. At this time, the chair recognizes Treasurer Busher for the presentation of the financial report. Thank you, Mayor Langfelder. The corporate fund in the month of December had a beginning balance of $44,168,297. We took in total receipts of $9,722,073. We had total disbursements of $8,189,899 which left the ending fund in the corp the ending balance of the corporate fund in the month of December of $45,700,471. Of that balance, Mayor Langfelder, the ARPA fund balance at the end of December was $15,202,007. This concludes my report, Mayor Langfelder. Thank you. Uh, is there a motion to approve the financial report? So moved. Second. second. Been moved and second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed and nay. Motion carries. Next, we do have a presentation from Hanson Engineers regarding the U.S. EPA's response to CWLP CCR extension request. And uh, I'd like them to come forward and if you would state your name and uh, we would appreciate it. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, my name is Matt Hyen with Hanson Professional Services. Here in Springfield. Repeat your name, sir. Matt Hyen with Hanson Professional Services, H-E-Y-E. -E. Put your mask down if you, if yeah, you can say that. Thank you. Oh, you don't have to. It's easier to understand. Can I it. leave it off? Yeah. yeah. yeah I still Whatever right. you're comfortable doing. Very Matt good. Hyland, is that? Hyen, H-E-Y-E-N. Hyen, okay, like hi, you. and then yin. Medically, <laughs> <laughs> as best as I could get. <clears throat> All right, thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm here this evening to give uh, everyone an update on the US EPA um, extension uh, response. Um, obviously, last week, um, they had identified um, some points in our uh, submittal 
Um, Want to talk about those, um, give you a, a brief overview of why we were doing this in the first place, um, everything that has been taking place uh, since the extension request went in and uh, path moving forward. I did bring um, paper copy here. Um, there's three volumes um, of uh, multi-inch binders here. So as a very voluminous submittal, um, obviously it takes a while to get through um, several decades of information that they had requested. Let's see if I can get this to work here. All right. Um, so first off, um, why were we uh, submitting a request in the first place? Uh, the United States um, Environmental Protection Agency um, in their Code of Federal Regulations, 40 CFR 257, had requested that all CCR units uh, cease receiving any waste um, on April 11th of 2021. Um, and that is for both CCR um, and non-CCR. So for um, CWLP in particular, the CCR would be any of the ash that would be sluiced from units 31 through 33. There is a small amount of CCR also from unit four that would be going over there. And most um, important to Springfield um, is the non-CCR there right now. That's the lime pond waste that's going over there. Um, so for um, our extension request, um, what we had done, um, it basically identified um, the facility. Um, here's a location map. Um, the generating facility is obviously there to the left. You've got the lake, you've got I-55 and I-72. And then you've got the ash pond facilities there on the right side. Those are all uh, outlined in the pink. Um, and then we are working on a new lime pond facility that's in the bottom of the exhibit um, there that's uh, outlined in green. And I'll wait for a second. Let's see if there's any questions on the map or, or where everything lays out there. All right, so for the extension request, again, this was because US EPA had identified April 11th of 2021. Um, we had submitted an extension request per their rules um, on November 24th of 2020. Um, Hansen actually compiled a variety of reports that had been completed by CWLP over the last several years. Um, in 2018, you had the integrated resources plan looking at the long-term future for all the Dahlman um, units that were out there. Um, in 2018 also, there was a extremely detailed study um, that takes up over half of this report um, for the coal combustion residuals final rules. And that was basically looking at alternatives. Can they turn the wet ash handling into dry ash handling? Can they build off-site facilities for storage? Things like that. <clears throat> and then also in 2020, um, there's another report um, detailing all the hydrogeology out there, what, what is going on um, in, in the ground, the groundwater, um, and the constituents that are out there. So our, our extension request referenced these reports. Um, those were already completed, um, very detailed in nature, and so we referenced those as part of the um, information to the US EPA for the extension request. Um, the unique thing about CWLP is that we connected both the water and the electric utilities, because um, there's um, really no one else in the nation that's doing that, and so that was a unique aspect because both your utilities are using those ash ponds currently. Um, we also provide a detailed progress um, of everything that had been going on to date with the planning studies, alternatives analysis, um, to identify how to build the new facilities to actually make sure that we could turn those off. <clears throat> and then finally, we provided a reasonable timeline with construction, um, permitting, contracting, uh, to be able to get that work done within the requested timeline. And I did include this. This is from the conclusion in our extension request. And, and this is um, just giving you a portrayal of how important we saw that the connection of both we, these were. The unique circumstances in which not only the city of Springfield's electric needs are tied to the continued use of the ash ponds, but the continued supply of potable water to those same citizens demonstrate that the current use of these facilities must be maintained until other combinations may be made. As is shown by CWLP's past studies and evaluations, along with their current progress towards a preliminary design of the necessary facilities to support the closure of the ash ponds, progressive steps have been taken with respect to closure. The timeline presented itemizes the numerous steps necessary to complete the projects that must extend beyond April 11th, 2021. So again, we're tying both the electric and the water together, um, giving them detailed information about why those lime ponds just simply can't be shut off, but also showing that we're making steps uh, to get the design permitting and construction completed within the timeline presented. So any questions um, about this so far? <clears throat> so
So the US EPA had identified um, deficiencies that they had um, in the report. Um, and there, there's four points. Um, what I'm gonna do here is try to illustrate um, some of the information that they had requested in those reports and then uh, point to the section in the report that is actually at or the reason why maybe that information wasn't in there. Um, again, you know, we were compiling information from a series of uh, reports that have already been completed that were extremely detailed. Uh, this first one, um, what they're looking at is for alternative capacity. Um, again, we summarize those reports. So there's a quote that is stated here um, that they're basically saying that where we had identified that the lake um, bounds uh, the generating facility with Interstate 55, and then the ash pond areas are bounded by the lake as well as some residential areas. Again, that was just a summary. Um, there's over 200 pages of the Burns and McDonald report that go through an extremely detailed analysis of all of the alternatives. For example, um, here are two locations within that report, 7512 and 8312, both of which are looking at off-site landfill locations as an alternatives analysis. So the information was there. Um, again, we would have welcomed the opportunity to answer those questions. Um, they did not ask, listed it as a deficiency, but the information was included in the report. Uh, next up um, also is looking at um, site-specific conditions. Um, regarding the amount of CCR and non-CCR waste streams um, that were in the, um, the generating facility, um, along with um, alternatives means for capacity options. Um, again, Burns and McDonald did an extensive study for this, um, looking at, again, like I said, turning from um, uh, wet ash handling to dry ash handling. <clears throat> and if you look at just the table of contents, I didn't even try to go back into the report itself, Section three is a design basis, specifically giving um, the design basis for um, existing and projected flows. So again, that um, volume information was in the report, along with section seven on the compliance options um, for ash um, handling treatment options. Again, that information on what they were requesting was in the report. Uh, the third item um, of a reported deficiency was a schedule. Um, Hansen actually put the schedule together because we were um, going through the process of designing the line ponds and were selected to do the other um, unit that will be required for this as well. So we, we had the unique um, uh, challenge of taking a look at both of those projects and seeing what it would take to get both of those constructed within the requested timeline. Um, so we included four pages of detailed breakdown of uh, man hours required, um, the number of um, contractors that would be necessary, the amount of earthwork that would be necessary, all of the information that they would need to show how large these projects were. Um, in addition, we had three pages that I've summarized in one here um, that shows the complete um, guideline schedule for everything that would needed to be done to get both of these uh, projects completed. Um, obviously, you can't see it there. The blue lines on the right are um, different uh, on the top portion are different uh, standpoints of uh, submittals that would be needed. In the middle part, that would be the Dahlman project. Um, that would actually be required to be completed before the lime ponds. And then the lower blue, that's the lime ponds. Those are actually connected. You have to get Dahlman first before you can get the lime ponds because that Dahlman project will remove the CCR that currently goes over to the uh, ash ponds. So once that's done, now you can test your new lime ponds and you won't contaminate those with CCR. So again, we laid out an extremely detailed schedule um, and includes all of the design, uh, the contracting, the permitting through Illinois EPA, and the construction and operational startup. Um, 133 lines of schedule to show how those um, projects were connected. The final deficiency that they listed um, was that they had requested information uh, from the on-site um, CCR landfill. Um, so this request was specific to the ash ponds. Um, the landfills that are out on site are actually permitted through the Illinois EPA um, rather than the US EPA. So the jurisdiction with the landfills are not under the um, US EPA. Um, they had requested that information. Um, that information is publicly available on CP, uh, CWLP's CCR website. So certainly it was made available um, publicly. Um, again, we would have welcomed the opportunity to point them into that direction. Um, but they're asking for landfill information on a request to shut down the ash ponds. So that 
request really wasn't pertinent to it, but again, that information is available. So any questions, those are the four deficiencies, any questions on that? Yes. So do you think that we've uh, identified the areas that they need us to uh, correct so we can do a resubmittal of our application? So the language in uh, the letter that they sent uh, right now, it is um, basically stated that they will not take any comments on these four points. However, um, CWLP can submit during the public comment period, which starts, um, I think, next week through the end of February. Um, they can provide information again saying, here's everything we've done to date. We're on schedule to get this done by 2023, just exactly like we asked. If they come out with a final ruling within the next time frame, which we don't know when that will be, once that final ruling comes out, then we can go back to them and say, hey, you know, in our public comment period, we've again shown you why we needed till 2023. Here's all the things that you asked for. They were in there. Again, can you re um, well, that, That's reassess. my point. My point is you identified stuff that was already in the report that they missed. Are they not reading it? They are not allowing for us to comment on those four points. I don't know why they didn't ask the question. It'd be great if they would have. So could you also identify what the CCR uh, uh, term is? I, I don't know. Sure. CCR is coal combustion residuals. Okay. Anything and, with. And the non-CCRs are, are, are different, obviously. Non-CCR are any flows that are going over there that aren't related to the um, coal-fired power plant. Thank you. Uh, you know, basically the, the regs are set up specifically for this early part, that part A, that, uh, you know, it's basically they didn't allow you to comment on it. So there's no, there's no process for us to appeal or anything like that formally through that process. Um, I mean, there's other avenues to challenge them, but that's, uh, that's something that we would uh, look at more of a, maybe as a, a last resort, you know, um, in doing so. Um. Alderman Donnelly. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, just a couple of quick questions. Is, is, is the back and forth or somewhat lack thereof uh, a part, a normal part of the EVA process? Is this normal? Go ahead. Sure. Yeah, good answer. So this setup is really, really unusual. Um, US EPA really isn't typically review submittals like this. It's usually done by at the state level. And um, this is part of what was put in by the Trump administration to give utilities a little bit more time. Um, so I don't know if they, it's to say like, is it typical to just not have a back and forth? The regulation clearly gave them authority to ask questions if they thought it was incomplete, but they chose not to take advantage of that opportunity. Um, but normally when you're working with the permitting authority like the Illinois EPA, you have back and forth, but this is um, the very unusual procedural setup, so. And is, uh, you know, I know we, we prefer that that 2023 deadline, you know, be changed obviously. Is that, I mean, that's fast approaching, and, you, and maybe you don't, maybe you can't answer this question because uh, the, the original was submitted, I believe you said, back in November of 2020, and you didn't know when that response was going to come. Do you have a definitive timeline as far as when you expect to be able to get a final determination? So, right, so they're saying, you know, in the determination that they will give us 135 days from their final, we can ask for more, and we will. But they haven't, um, they're, not com they're not legally required or committed to a specific date. Now, they have hinted around May 1st is their goal, but um, under the regulations, it was expected it would take them four months to do what it took them 14 months to do. So there's certainly reason to think that um, when they get our comments, they're going to have a lot more work to do before they can get to the final. At least that's my hope. Yeah, and Hanson will uh, continue with the presentation. They'll go over that. Oh, sorry. Alderman uh, Hanauer, then Alderwoman Conley. Well, my my question is, have we have we reached out to Senator Durbin, Senator Duckworth, <coughs> um, uh, Representative LaHood and Davis? Because this is, I mean, they they got to know about this. This is it's kind of ridiculous that you know we we've given them a date. I think it's a fair date. Um, we just shut down one of the one, well one of the units at the, at the end of this past year, and uh, I just think that th we need to get them involved. I, I, I and I'm sorry I I, I don't want to say anything bad about EPA, but 
<laughs> it doesn't sound like they read the, the dang report. They just flipped through it. Yeah, we'll cover that in a minute. Alderman Conley. Thank you, and, and I'm sorry. I just, um, how long is the public comment period that that's coming up that we're, CWLP will be submitting more comments? It's 30 days. That's a 30, and when does that one start? Uh, January 23rd, 25th. Yeah, they don't have the website up yet to be able to do that. So. Okay, so, because I'll admit, I was I was confused that US EPA was making this decision too. I thought this was an IEPA thing, so. So US EPA will have a new website up that anyone can submit comments on this proposal to. They sent us the pre-publication version, so it's waiting in line to get published in the Federal Register, and then anybody will have, you know, a docket and a link that they could submit comments to, and we'll probably help <coughs> facilitate that as it gets so this, closer. So their initial determination that they that this was insufficient. We've already gotten that, and we just don't. Ha it just hasn't been published in the register yet. It's just a, a it's just a copy of what's going to be published. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, then that makes more sense, and it's just a thirty days comment period. Yes. Just thirty days. Yep. So, are we planning on resubmitting portions of this application highlighted with? Yep. You want to continue on? We'll let you continue. Sir. Sure. Thank you. It's like I'm building up to the you know, <laughs> big finish here. <laughs> So what have we done to date, um, you know, Hanson and cooperation with CULP <clears throat> since the submission went in? Um, so all three units of Dolman 3 have been closed, um, which is a majority of the CCR that was actually going over there. So there's no more ash sluicing that's uh, going over to the Dolman ash ponds. Um, we did hold a public meeting for the relocation of the line ponds. Um, again, that's at one of the former CWLP facilities. It's over by a residential neighborhood, so there was a, a public meeting that was held. Um, to discuss that project. Um, there's been public meetings uh, held on the closure of the ash ponds. Um, that's through the Illinois EPA process, but again, still shows progress towards uh, moving uh, through final closure of these. Um, the design is actually underway for both the uh, Lime Pond project and the Dolman facilities. Uh, both of those are gonna be going out to construction um, this year, uh, 2022, we'll be turning dirt. So again, we're, we're staying um, um, up with the original schedule that we had submitted. Um, the Illinois EPA construction permits for both of those facilities have already been submitted. Those were submitted in December of last year. We've got to get those in queue and approved by Illinois EPA so that we can actually go out and start the construction. But again, that process has already happened. Um, and then also the Illinois EPA, um, we've submitted a draft NPDES update again for additional removal of waste flows to the ash ponds. So um, Illinois EPA has seen that information and they're um, reviewing the construction permits right now. So all of that has been has taken place in a little over a year since we submitted the request. Again, trying to follow that timeline and, and get us uh, to construction completion by 2023. And then moving forward, um, obviously we've got the public comment response. Um, I know there were uh, questions about contacting um, the congressional um, delegation, things like that. I think all of those are, are good things moving forward uh, to present the city's case specifically um, with the impact to the water facilities. Um, again, we're still moving forward with the construction of the Dolman and the Lime Pond project. Um, in fact, next month those plans will be finished and we'll be moving that through the contracting process. So um, again, we're, we're moving that along uh, very quickly. Um, and then continued coordination with the US EPA um, as much as we can and then Illinois EPA to make sure that we get those construction permits and, and can stay on our timeline. So any uh, questions or comments? Alderman Conley. Thank you. So is this being coordinated out of Region 5, or are we dealing with um, US EPA headquarters? Where is this decision coming this from? This is headquarters in Washington, I believe. Is that right, Deb? Um, yes. I mean, our understanding is there's like teams that do supposedly have someone from the region that should have known a little bit more about our facility, but um, mostly mostly at headquarters. Mostly headquarters. And then just real quick, when was the NPDES <coughs> permit submitted? Uh, we submitted that last um, last fall. Um, there was an anti-degradation permit that we submitted to show um, that we could take some of the flows that were going to the ash ponds and take them to the new line ponds. So that has been submitted. We've actually got a draft MPDS permit um, where Illinois EPA has shown that those flows have been accepted, but it's still in draft form. And that all shows removal of the CCR? Correct. Okay. Thank you. 
question. Alderman McMenamin. How many pages long is the U.S. EPA letter that the city received? Um, 15 pages long. <clears throat> and did, does it show its origin on the letterhead, on the masthead? Uh, there was, I don't have the letter with me. No, no, it's just a statement, is it? There's no. Yeah. It was just a statement letter. I mean, there was nothing really on the top of the letter. Um, and uh, it was basically just an email from, you know, the person that they assigned from the, the local office. I see. Thank you. Um, and I will, I will say just, just in general information, too, is that, you know, right now we're following two different rules. The, we've got the federal rule and we've got the state rule. How it should work is kind of dead alluded to. Um, you know, the state's the CCR plan that, that, that they developed should it be submitted to the US EPA for approval so that we, we can follow then and once it's approved we can follow the Illinois EPA rule and not be kind of messing around like this like that like kind of we're caught in the middle of things um, that hasn't happened yet and I don't know we don't know why but you know we're gonna be reaching out to the Illinois EPA to see if they can you know kind of move things along we just recently found out last week that that process has not been done so um, it does leave us a little bit of a, a problem with timelines and those kinds of things that just don't match up quite right between the two rules. And, you know, we do have to follow the Illinois rules because we have to do, we have to apply for permits. We have to wait for those things um, when we start dealing with the ash pond. So um, that's, that's where the, the problem is going to, you know, crop up even more if they don't get things settled between uh, the two different agencies. Alderman Redpath and Alderman Hanauer and then Alderman Conley. Matt, do you think that we've met the requirements to uh, for this uh, application? Yes. <clears throat> Thank you, Alderman Hanauer. Thank you. Okay, uh, let's just let's just throw it out there. Worst case scenario, they they come back um, and they say, "What is what you say? 115 days or something?" 135 is what they propose. Okay, so that puts us in the middle of summer, right? End of summer. That we have to have it closed by what <clears throat> what what happens then what I mean from an operating perspective mm -hmm. at CWLP and for the city of Springfield what happens then the so we are going to expedite you know tasks as much as we can um, and we're laying out that right now with Hanson and the you know the staff at the varying uh, you know either the power plant or the water plant but I, I can, you know, from our viewpoint, asking for the extension, um, you know, in no way do I see us stopping su supplying water to the city of Springfield. We will not jeopardize the health and safety of our citizens. We will continue to pump water, uh, period, no matter what happens. Uh, you know, there's, there's, no, there's no other option for that. Um, but that doesn't you mean risk that we're not fined gonna... at that time, though, Doug. What was that? Would we get fined by the U.S. EPA for doing that? And I mean, there could be some court issues. Um, we could hit end up with a consent decree, those kinds of things. Um, that's all kind of on the table. Okay. Um, but again, we're going to try to see if we can expedite things as much as possible. But to there's no way we'd be able to have the lime ponds, the new ones, uh, constructed by this fall. There's, that's just impossible. <coughs> Especially when you consider the you know weather delays, you consider COVID-related issues, supply chain issues, those kinds of things are all going to impact anything that we can do to accelerate beyond what we're doing right now. Plus, we got to get Illinois EPA to approve, right? Correct. Yes. So we, we got two agencies that are fighting against each other on who's who's giving <laughs> us the approval. Right. So we would, in a sense, we would keep the water going. What about Unit Four? Unit, unit four, I, I, I feel a little bit more confident that we're going to be able to, you know, reach those goals that we have by accelerating things. So, I mean, of course, that could mean some, you know, uh, various actions, depending, you know, changing how long we bid the projects and those kinds of things, uh, trying to do some pumping temporarily. Um, of course, we might have to get permitting for that, but, uh, you know, those things that we're going to be looking at. Alderwoman Conley. Um, Alderman Hanauer asked my worst case scenario question, so okay. thank you. Thank you. But I think Matt uh, pointed it out that you see the report there, 1,200 pages, and uh, I think, uh, you know, we're a unique operation with water and, uh, you know, coal combustion. <laughs> and so uh, I think uh, we will point that out. We still can submit a, uh, a letter to the EPA. <clears throat> you know, it doesn't prohibit us from sending anything, 
So that's what we will do. Uh, of course, we'll contact uh, our legislative officials right away. Um, on the federal level and then uh, either send it to them with the CC to EPA or the reverse, one or the other. So we're still uh, working through that response and we'll do so accordingly. Any other questions or comments? Thank you, Matt. That was a very good report. Thanks. No Thank you. I'd like to uh, acknowledge Sarah. Satch Pecori and C.J. Saladino, who's also present with Hanson. So appreciate you taking the time coming tonight to go over this with us. Mr. Mayor. If I yes, Alderman Gregory. The only comment I got is for, norm, for the normal citizens in Springfield, for you to hear, for us to hear, you say that we're going to keep pumping water no matter what, and we're going to work this out. I, I think that, that you know, does a, a good deal for our city because I know when this first came out, you know, we, you know, I got a bunch of calls about, you know, water and where do we go from here. So um, I, I, I'd like, like to hear that. Thank you. Made me nervous, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. Right. Chair will entertain a motion to dispense with the reading of the minutes of the January 4th, 2022 meeting of the City Council and approve the minutes. So moved. Second. second. The move and second. Any discussion? <coughs> All in favor say aye. Aye. No say nay. Motion carries. Chair will entertain a motion to incorporate the pre-council first reading of ordinances in the record of the City Council meeting. So moved, Mayor. Second. second. The move and second. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. The chair will entertain a motion to incorporate the pre-council reading of the consent agenda into the record of this city council. I'll move. Second. second. The move and second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Say nay. Motion carries. <laughs> chair will entertain a motion to place the consent agenda on final passage. I'll move. I'll move. Second. The move and second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carries. Agenda number 2021-336, 2021-337, 2021-370, and 2021-371 remain tabled or in committee. Hey, we still got a vote on we that. We got a vote on the consent. On the consent. Yep. Chair will entertain a motion to place the consent agenda on final so passage. Move. So move. Second. Been moved and seconded. Any discussion? <laughs> you blame All it on the COVID. The consent agenda? Just blame it on the COVID. Vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. <laughs> Voting is now open. <clears throat> And the consent agenda passes 10 voting yes, none voting no. Do I have to have to repeat the other, sir? Thank you. Chair will entertain a motion to suspend <laughs> the rules in place on first reading agenda number 2022-020, an ordinance authorizing execution of a Chodo subrecipient agreement number 21-SR-006 with Nehemiah Expansion, Inc. for family development of 40 new single family mixed income rental homes utilizing community housing <coughs> development block grant funds, organization of the Shoto funds in an amount not to exceed $1,200,000 for the Office of Pl Planning and Economic Development. So moved. Second. Second. The move and second, any discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed say nay, motion carries. Is there any unfinished business come before city council? We have ordinances uh, remaining in committee still. Uh, Director McCarty, if he's here, uh, would you like to go over the budget? Uh, the budget books will be out tomorrow. If you'd like to go over the schedule real quick. So tomorrow we'll be sending out a couple of different things. You'll be getting the budget summary document that's usually included every year in your budget books, and you'll be getting the budget book electronically. We don't have the books done yet due to an issue with the person who normally does them. Uh, the thing about the electronics is you all will see an improvement this year. We've put a content, uh, like a bookmarks in there. You'll be getting instructions on how to use that so that you can actually put comments on the electronic version and immediately and easily jump to different departments and different sections of the book from an electronic standpoint. So I would suspect that many of you will prefer that over the books. But ultimately, we will get the books done. It's just going to be later on in the, in the week, hopefully, if not early next week. Nothing we can do about that, but we are working to try and get that taken care of. If anybody has any questions, certainly reach out to us. As you all know, the hearings start next week with the overview and the elected officials on Monday, followed by, I'm not sure of the departments, but we have another one next Thursday, then the following Monday, following Thursday, and that should wrap it up so that we can do amendments and then have the hearing at committee the whole 
first committee of the whole in February, and ultimately, hopefully, pass the budget by the end of February as normal. Are there any questions? Alderman Hanauer? Uh, yeah, Bill, could you make sure that we have, uh, yeah, and work with the clerk's office to make sure we have that uh, document on here, too? On our computer yes. screens. Please. Yep. Mm -hmm. They will be getting them. Uh, Darlene will be getting them too. So yes, I'll just mention to them to uh, try and make sure they're loaded up for the for the hearings. Just any other unfinished business? Oh, uh, sorry, Mayor. Oh, I had to sorry, Alderman oh, well, Conley. Yeah. Um, when we put comments on those, will we be logging in with our own individuals, or will those comments be transported onto the? So, so what you can do is you'll get your, that's a good question, you'll get your individual files and then if you have a place that you save files either on your computer or if you have a G drive like the most employees do, then you can put your comments on and save it to that and then every time you open it up, you'll have your comments right on there and you can, can go right to them. So, we'll have to, yeah, we'll make sure and if anybody it. gets their electronic and they really like it and they don't want a book or they don't want to have to worry about carrying, just let us know and, and we don't even have to do one. Uh, we're going to cut back on the number of books that we're doing. For instance, we're not doing books for the directors this year. We're sending them Pleasure. electronic Pleasure. and they can copy or print out anything that they want. <clears throat> but as I said, I suspect most people will want to migrate to the electronic because it is pretty handy. <clears throat> I think when you get it and see the improvements that we've done to it, that you'll like it as well, at least most of you. I understand there are some people who still prefer paper, so we certainly can do those as well. Any other questions on that? Any other unfinished business? Oh. Any? Oh, Alderman Hanauer. I don't know if this is unfinished business, but I did want to. I did want to bring this up, and um, I'm not the first uh, Hanauer that worked at the city of Springfield, but uh, <laughs> it looks like I'm right now. Uh, for now, I'm the last. Um, my uh, my brother Scott's been with CWLP for 35 years, wow. and uh, uh, I think Friday is his official last day. He's retiring. He's been in the same unit, I think, all 35 years. He's been in the Energy Services Unit, um, and I just wanted to congratulate him and uh, you know, good. and that uh, I'm proud a nice of him. Nice so. brother. It's a good brother. <laughs> That was for Scott, not for the alderman. Yeah, that's, that's for right. that's for my that's that's for my brother Scott. So that's right. No, that was nice. Very good. Yeah, we appreciate his service. Uh, is there any new business come before the council? All the women descend so. Did someone have a birthday? Mm -hmm. You look good for twenty one. So that's <laughs> yeah. Hard. See, that's why I really didn't come last week. Uh -huh. <laughs> We're past that. <laughs> But thank happy, you. I appreciate all the uh, well wishes and birthday wishes. So, so thank you very much. Mayor. <clears throat> yes, um, all the women purchase. Today we had our overflow weekly meeting, and I did request for an uh, updated report and a, updated re a separate report on how we're dealing with the COVID situations between all of the agencies. So we should be receiving that by the end of the week. Great. We got something today. Yeah, we yeah. got two well, today. Well, good. I, I think I requested for two because they wanted to separate it, but I just wanted to keep us all abreast of what's Thank going you. on. <clears throat> Great. And then uh, speaking of COVID, there's a uh, COVID vaccine clinic at the library this Saturday. <clears throat> That's uh, Springfield's Lincoln Library uh, from uh, 9 o'clock in the morning to 3 o'clock and ages 5 and up, and booster shots will be available as well. Any other new business? The, uh, I'm not sure, uh, Chief, if you'd wait a second. Yeah. Uh, this is the Chief's actually, is, <laughs> if this is old business and new business. This is the Chief's uh, last city council meeting, but we appreciate uh, your years of service or decades of service and appreciate the last nine years as the police chief. I don't know if you want to come up now or if you want to wait till next Tuesday. You better have a proclamation you can do for both. Him. What's that? You better have a proclamation form or something. Yeah, we'll do that next Tuesday. My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till then. Wowza. <laughs> Times are tough. I guess. He just got back. Give him a break. Okay. Right. Thank you very much. So any other new business by the council members? Is there anybody wish to address the council? Oh, if you come forward and uh, state your name and address, we'd appreciate it. Hello. Hello. My name is Alicia Brown. Um, 
I'm planning on opening up a lounge downtown called Replay Lounge. And um, I've been reaching out to the council and um, I reached Mitt's purchase a couple of times. I just want to uh, get some answers. No one's returning any phone calls back or anything. I just want to see if anyone could tell me anything. Well, I have been returning phone calls. I want to be clear on that. Harrison. Well, I've talked to you a few yeah. times. Yeah, okay. I did talk to you. Just talk to her about the app. Oh, is, is it regarding a liquor license? Yes. Okay. Yeah, we can, uh, if you want to give your information to Juan Huerta, he's back there. Okay. And uh, we can uh, set up a meeting. Okay. Or thank look you. into it anyway. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Alderman Hanauer. Yeah, regarding liquor license, um, I was in a establishment, uh, a new Mexican restaurant, or relatively new. Um, they had told me that they had applied for a liquor license like five months ago and 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 have not gotten anything. Um, the name of the establishment? I, you know? I sent it to the Corporate Gracie yeah, Council. I was going to say that we, uh, we can discuss this maybe uh, outside of the meeting, but there are some issues with yeah. qualification, and I believe that uh, I did talk to uh, the Liquor Commission staff, and they have talked to them. Right. And they're aware of what the issues are, but we should probably discuss this outside of the meeting. Right. Well, the only thing I would I would point out is that they, had, they opened up another restaurant at the same time and it, in another, you know, town outside of Springfield in Sangamon County. They were able to get a liquor license right away. Springfield, we, we've been, a, um, you know, five months. I know Alderman Redpath had had a, a restaurant that took a while to get. I mean, we, I, you know, I, these these restaurants when they open up, it, that that really hurts them, you know. Um, so, yeah, we'll check into I that. I just wanted to bring it up. Thank you. Issues are, and uh, if you know the other location, we'll see uh, how they did it. And I don't know if it's a is it a restriction at the state level or more our level. Both. Oh, okay. The only reason they would have gotten the other license is they probably didn't disclose some of the information. Okay. Uh, but again, that's something we did check in on that, and I do know that Todd actually, I think, met with him or talked to him about it, I think, twice. Okay. We'll check into it. Yep. Yeah. Alderman happy, happy to do that. Yeah, and, and Alderman Hanauer actually did contact me about it, and I meant to give you a call before today, but I just did not get a chance to do that. <coughs> I was able to talk to Todd and he uh, filled me in, and then Carla in the office also reached back out to him last week. Um, you know, I think that um, you know, we got to bring problems to the attention of the right people. But at the same time, I think our we ought to hear from our staff before we elevate these things to this level. Um, I think we're undercutting our staff when we kind of come out with uh, problems because it can make our city look bad. It can make our staff look bad, and I think we're proud of our city, and we're proud of many of our staff. Now, that's a Ward 7 uh, tavern that was mentioned just now. I've never received a phone call from the proprietor, um, and if I had, I would have gone to Todd Oliver, and I would have said, Todd, you know, what's going on? And that Todd would have said, well, there's some important legal issues that are being uh, under consideration. I think we just got to be careful. I've seen a kind of a increasing trend of this of bringing stuff up at city council before it goes to our staff and um i think it's a problem and that's why i'm mentioning it tonight and i that's why i was very clear that i've been returning the phone calls because i don't expect for people to come up here in front of us if i'm talking to them and referring them over to legal legal counsel but i just want to make it clear that i am returning phone calls i am returning emails and trying to figure out what's going on as well Alderman Gregory, I think <clears throat> I think uh, you know I've been here for some time, and I remember coming on, and and we've always had this this thing about talking about the the time frame of permits and whether it's liquor license and things, and you know I I, I respect what you're saying, Alderman McMenamin, as far as our staff, and I think we have great staff, but there is times that constituents, um, you know, are not getting the response that they. Um, um, are expecting. Even sometimes we don't get the responses that we are expecting, and. Um, you know, we, we all have areas of improvement, and I, I definitely, definitely think that our, our permitting and, you know, alcohol is a privilege, you know, so, but, but however, the process, whether it's yes or no, um, I think we can, we can, we can uh, work at it, in my opinion. Can I ask okay. a question sure. here? So, is that something that we can look at, um, Zirkle, where we put a timeline on 
how long it takes for the process, whether it's 30 days, 60 days, just to do the proper vetting that your office needs to do? Yes, I, I'm sorry. Sorry. No, I think it would be, uh, I think the mayor's actually talked, for example, on different kinds with like public works, trying to put time frames on for like building permits. Mm -hmm. I think some kind of a review time frame is uh, something that should be looked at. The two or three instances that we're talking here, there are some other uh, issues that we really shouldn't be discussing publicly. Uh, and uh, so I'm uh, wanting to make sure that we follow the proper uh, propriety, <coughs> however, in each of the two instances we've just talked about just a moment ago, uh, there are very specific reasons for the uh, 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 scrutiny that has happened. And I think you're particularly uh, you're aware of this, the, the one instance. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, but uh, we will follow up on both of those and make sure that we try to clarify what the uh, concern is to see if they can be remedied for sure. Thank you. Alderman Desenzo. Um, thank you, Mayor. People don't want to come and sit through city council meetings. So if they're out here advocating for their own business, it's because they're frustrated and they can't get the answers they want. So we've seen that happen time and time again. And you know, I'm not pointing any fingers of blame at anyone. I'm just saying that you have to really want to get your permitting correct or your licensing <coughs> through if you're coming to sit at these meetings. So. Let's just take that into consideration. I agree. Any other uh, discussion or comments? Is there a motion for adjournment? I will. Second. Second. Come sure. Come on up. <laughs> yes, I'm glad you're back. It Hi, was kind of dead without you last week, okay? <laughs> it was kind of dead, but I'm glad you're back, and happy birthday. Thank you. Uh, I would like to ask a question, if I may. Uh, do you have the lights, the cameras up that takes the license plates up yet? No. Nope. Not yet. No. Nope. Okay. Well, <clears throat> I was at 9th and um, North Grand the other day. And a fireman, a fire chief, the fire was going. They had their lights going on and two cops cars behind it. And he had to stop because the people would not stop and let them through. Now, I remember when Pat Ward was there, he always made sure that they got a $500 fine, okay, not stopping. And there was two cops cars. In fact, to tell you the truth, a lady cut in front of me to get past whatever they were doing. But I have to compliment that fire driver, fireman's driver. He was very good, very excellent good. I mean, he knew how to stop it, knew how to start it and fast to get. If you are stopping for a half a second, that half a second means life and means saving a house or a child in a car. That half a second is very important. And I think it's time that we really look at and get these cameras up, Mayor, because I think if they would have took that guy's license plate, he would be in jail. Not like the lady that brought that guy, the girl to the Lamford High School. She's not in jail yet. Sorry. Well, thank I shouldn't you. have said that. Huh? Are there uh, the license plate readers are in the process? The sooner you get them up, the better off you are. You really are. And I want to compliment the policemen, too, because they were really frustrated because they had to stop, and they were going 60 miles an hour or more. And they wanted to get there. And to have somebody dumb enough and a lady dumb enough to cut in front of somebody to get going, that's wrong. That's not even driving. You know, that's stupidity. It might be their house, but they're going to stop somebody to get there for a half a second. I just had to say that. I'm sorry. Uh, thank you. You're welcome. Be good. Yep. Anybody else? Is there a motion for adjournment? So moved. Move and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. We're adjourned. Thank you very much. Miss <laughs> Alice.
Yes, sir. That's 40. 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 That's 40.